hopefully you see my screen. And today we are going to talk about modern web applications, about different rendering patterns, about PWA and about micro frontends. This topic is oriented to help you uh, make right decision at the start of your project uh, based on your business needs, uh, based on your uh, developers needs, uh, and uh, hopefully and the, at the end of the presentation, uh, it would be easier for you to make a right decision with which technologies to proceed. So let's have a look at the agenda. And uh, today we will talk about uh, SPA versus MPA, about their pros and cons. Uh, then we will discuss different rendering strategies for improving performance and CEO and developer experience. Uh, then we will talk about SPA natural evolution into micro frontends. And last but not least, we will talk about uh, mobile optimization and PWA. Any comments? I hear somebody. No, okay. no, it's, it's not the comments. Sorry. Good. If no, let's uh, move on. So, and uh, let's start from the uh, MPA. And what uh, is MPA? Uh, as the name implies, multi page application comprises numerous web pages downloaded when users access various web areas. This is a standard web app development approach for websites that need to handle a large amount of content. And uh, as you may see uh, in the diagram, for every request, server returns for us new HTML page. Specifically, the server provides all necessary resources, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for every new page when user clicks uh, on some links or sends some responses. Then we have for instance, some loading, and after uh, each of these requests, uh, we replace entire application, uh, rep replace kind of our entire application with a new one. So uh, it would be better to see what multi page application is. So let's have a look on an uh, example of multi page application. So a uh, good example of multi-page application is uh, GitHub block. So if we open developer tools and go to the network tab, and you, uh, first of all, you may take a look at this rewarding button. If I press the link, you may see that we have rewarding and also we load new uh, HTML page. If we go to the product section, we want new product HTML page. Uh, this is why we call it multi-page application, since for every root, we want new HTML page. Um, let's uh, talk about opposite of multi-page application, uh, about uh, single page application. So single page application, is type of web applications that allows you to work on the one HTML page. Uh, thanks to Ajax technology, it's possible to display content without rewarding the page when a person uses it. Uh, when employed, this code, uh, which typically depends on uh, JavaScript frameworks, uh, guarantees the high speed of the SPA. And as you may see uh, on in the diagram that uh, uh, we receive HTML only uh, after initial request. Uh, then we uh, fetch all our necessary data just by uh, AJAX uh, requests, receive JSONs and update our state. We handle all our routine by uh, JavaScript. And uh, let's take a look uh, at a good uh, example of SPA. I, uh, opened Angular page. Angular is a great uh, SPA framework. So uh, let's also open our developer tools. And for instance, uh, open our bar. Let's make it bigger. Let's go to the 
documents. Uh, and as you may see, we have no reward in here. <laughs> if I'm navigating, uh, let's uh, open uh, the stack. If I uh, press any, see that we uh, didn't have any page uh, loading. I mean, new HTML, we just updated our existing uh, page with uh, new data by JavaScript. And you may, you may feel like, okay, and what's the difference between these two approaches except uh, loading new pages? Uh, Let's talk about their pros and cons. Yeah. So uh, let's compare SPA and uh, MPA. So uh, good uh, sites, strong sites of SPA is speed and responsiveness after first word. Since first word of SPA might be uh, might be uh, longer since we need to what big JavaScript bundle, but then our application feels like native application. We don't have any rewardings, uh, frozen states, uh, so. Uh, it's strong side of SPA. Also strong side of SPA is decoupled frontend. Um, it means that uh, our, usually our frontend when we use SPA leaves uh, a part of backend. Since when we talk about MPA, uh, usually uh, even in some articles, in some sources, uh, we uh, call MPA also as uh, MVC. It's a bit different, uh, uh, it's with different things, but still, uh, with MPA, we usually have a uh, tight front end and back end, and it's better to uh, decouple it. Um, also, with SPA, we have just better offline opportunities. Uh, it's easier to set up PWA. We also can set up PWA for uh, multi patch applications, but uh, it would be more tricky also with SPA. There is no need to what resources that you already have what uh, to your page uh, since you do not what everything <laughs> once more. So it's uh, better. But uh, uh, SPA also has uh, drawbacks uh, as uh, SEO is more challenging uh, now uh, when Google Crawler has updated it's easier but since uh, but still uh, we have different queues for spa and mpa and it makes uh, our seo just more challenging um, also javascript is strictly required it uh, might uh, sounds bizarre <laughs> that javascript is required but still uh, some government organizations uh, some uh, organizations that treat about security might turn uh, off uh, JavaScript and uh, probably application won't work. And also uh, we already discussed that uh, SPA has slower first page words since we need to what big JavaScript bundle. And uh, let's move to the multi-patch application. CEO is definitely uh, more simple. Uh, there is big number of existing frameworks and solutions since, since uh, MPA is order approach and we have uh, more solutions for it. Uh, and as a drawbacks, we uh, may say that we have just more tightly coupled front-end and back-end and uh, we have slower uh, page what since we need to what every page uh, on every click. Um, so. We now understand that uh, every technology is trade-off of user experience, performance, and developer experience, but how we can improve uh, these approaches? Uh, maybe SPA or MPA. Uh, we will talk today a bit more about SPA, but if you uh, maybe you already know about what we will talk, so maybe type your ideas in the chat and we will discuss them. Maybe I... Uh, haven't covered some uh, some good ideas how to improve SPA or MPA. Just type it in the chat and we will uh, try to discuss it. So looks like that nothing happens. SSR. Yep. 
SSR. Uh, we will talk about SSR, uh, real grade SOTS, SSR set rendering to emulate MPA in SPI first application. Yep, it's a uh, good cause. Uh, I even would cause it SSR is uh, multi-page application plus SPA, lazy loading. Uh, yep, we will cover today lazy loading. Uh, good thoughts. So let's move on. And you were right that we will talk about uh, server-side rendering as an approach for improving performance and SEO. Since according to the researchers, research is uh, linked, the slower page response time results in increased uh, page uh, abandonment. So uh, as you may see uh, at the screenshot, uh, this is a typical response from the server uh, with uh, SPA and uh, uh, till uh, 219 uh, search engines uh, were unable uh, they uh, were able to index uh, these pages, but till uh, 219, uh, they used the old Chrome version. Uh, in the middle of previous decade, Google Crawler started to render SPA and index it, but there were some problems with it because the Crawler had old Chrome version. Um, finally, in 218, Google CEO team fixed it, and now Chrome uh, can index pages better, but still uh, there is a difference. Uh, sites with classical server-side approach are now indexed faster than general SPA, because for SPA, Google, Google Crawler uh, uses uh, an additional queue uh, for pages that needs to render it in, uh, in the client side. Uh, so uh, let's uh, move on and uh, let's go back to SPA once more and uh, uh, see uh, how it works uh, more precisely. So with SPA, the server provides uh, the user with an empty HTML page. Uh, after initial requests, then uh, browser what's uh, JavaScript and CSS that needs to, uh, that needs for page. <coughs> then browser executes uh, our framework, a library, and we see a fully interactive page. And as you may see, we see interactive page only on the sixth step. Uh, on these steps, our page, in, in, in best case, we will see just some loading. <laughs> Uh, so we can improve it CEO and uh, first time uh, first time what by using SSR SSR with hydration we will talk about hydration a bit later um, with in hydration in, in SSR when a web page is requested uh, it's rendered on the server uh, and served to the client and finally rendered by the client uh, as you may see uh, that we see uh, our web page on the third step since we receive already rendered HTML and uh, user can see the page. If it's block or some static content, it's great since uh, you already can see it. But still the page is not interactive uh, since we need to what JavaScript, hydrate the page and only then our page will be uh, interactive. Uh, and uh, this pattern is uh, fa this pattern facilitates uh, by uh, meta frameworks. We call uh, we call these frameworks meta frameworks meta frameworks as Next.js, uh, Next.js, or SvelteKit. So uh, looks like that it's great approach, but this approach also uh, has some. Uh, pros and cons. So let's talk about pros of this approach. Uh, SSR allows uh, better SEO since we want uh, just HTML uh, with, and there is no need to render anything to create this HTML on the client and it's easier for search engines to uh, index it. SSR is better for slow connections because the HTML is immediately provided uh, whereas uh, in uh, CSR the user sees a blank page until the JavaScript is loaded and renders the page content. Uh, also SSR allows uh, seeing uh, content uh, with JavaScript disabled. Uh, 
it sounds bizarre. However, users can at least uh, see content. Um, and SSR uh, first, what is usually faster, since we already have uh, an HTML. But uh, uh, despite all these uh, strong sites, SSR has uh, some drawbacks. And uh, drawbacks is that CSR is faster after the first page was, since there is uh, no server request to change page, which makes it uh, insanely fast. Uh, also, uh, CSR provides a better UI uh, experience because it gives a native app feel to the page. Uh, we also can achieve it with uh, SSR, but it's more complicated. And main drawback, uh, I, I would say that SSR is much more expensive since uh, we need to uh, since uh, we need uh, computing resources and computing resources costs uh, money. Uh, so you may feel how we can improve it. We may improve it with uh, SSG. Uh, which is uh, static site generation. SSG has similarities with SSR. The page is also generated in the server. However, the page is rendered at the build time. Since with SSR, we generate new page uh, per every uh, request. But with SSG, we build it just once. So instead of rendering the page on the server upon uh, the receival of requests, the page is already rendered in the server, waiting to be served to the client. And you may feel like, why on earth should I use SSR then? Uh, so when you have dynamic data that frequently change, uh, it's better to use SSR. If no, if you have uh, applications such as block, for instance, it's better to use SSG. And we also call uh, such uh, applications uh, as uh, Jamstack applications. Uh, These applications has uh, these applications have such uh, pros as simple hosting. Uh, they are faster than SSR, but we need to uh, rebuild our application usually in order to fresh our data. Uh, but we can also uh, fix this uh, uh, this sync uh, by ESR, which is incremental static regeneration. This is a new approach that is presented in uh, Next.js frameworks, or you can build it uh, by your own, but it would be more difficult with uh, hosting. So the main idea of this approach is that, uh, we, that you can regenerate your page based on some uh, strategy, such a uh, time-based or maybe event-based, and once uh, the regeneration is complete, the server swaps out the regenerated static version with uh, the updated version. And you may also cache your static uh, sites uh, on uh, CDN and it will make your application insanely fast. So uh, this approach has pros as static site with dynamic server data that uh, usually is up to date, but uh, this approach has also some uh, drawbacks. Uh, this approach is difficult to self-host, but you may use Vercel as an uh, option for uh, it. Uh, by the way, Vercel and Next uh, are not paying money to me that I make advertisement for them. I see some comments in the chat. Uh, also, I heard uh, islands architecture term. Yeah, we will talk about islands architecture uh, also today. So, but uh, looks like that, uh, but have you uh, feel that with uh, SPA and SSR that your page is frozen, like with SSR especially, that you see content, but you can't interact with it? Uh, since you receive HTML, but uh, you haven't executed your uh, JavaScript. So any framework that uses hydration on the initial page, what uh, the app might feel uh, frozen. Uh, so uh, we might feel, uh, might fix this issue by uh, hydrating only interactive uh, parts. Uh, we can facilitate this pattern by uh, what in entire bundle and uh, uh, render some uh, some elements, for instance, on scroll footer, or we may even uh, 
break our code to different chunks by code splitting. Now a lot of tools facilitates code splitting uh, and uh, what our code by chunks. <clears throat> so let's move on and talk about uh, Ireland's rendering since it was even uh, said. So first of all, I would like to say that uh, Ireland's rendering is uh, I was rendering facilitates by framework as Astro, and uh, Astro is multi-page application. Uh, so when we talk about Ivan's rendering and Astro, it's not SPA more. So how it works, Astro divides web page into independent components, or we call those components Ivan's. Uh, as you may see in the diagram, mm -hmm. uh, we render each island uh, independently and in parallel. Then we combine uh, all our islands to form a full page, uh, and uh, we uh, provide JavaScript only for uh, parts that we need. For instance, uh, header and footer uh, will have JavaScript, and static and this uh, middle part won't have JavaScript. We may uh, add JavaScript uh, uh, to our parts as we want, and uh, but. In Ivan's architecture world, you are also individual Ivan's lawyers that uh, each have their own context and React uh, tree. So this means that you can't just share context or bubble up uh, or down React events. You have to implement custom logic to connect those Ivan's. So this is main drawback that Ivan's are independent. And I prepared a small demo uh, for Ivan's uh, and Astro framework. Uh, so let me open the browser. So uh, this is a simple example of counter implemented on Astro. So let's uh, reload page and uh, now, if I press uh, some buttons, the uh, application is not working. It's expected, no worries. Uh, and if I go to VS Code, I may add uh, client directives. I may provide JavaScript for components that I want. So let's add client what directive to, uh, to our application. And, oh, do you see it? Have I shared? The, the VS Code? Yes, yes. Right. And uh, let's go back to the Astro and uh, try it. So uh, client load means that uh, we force our browser to load JavaScript uh, when we enter the page. But we can do it even more efficiently. We can use such directives as client visible. So let's add this directive and put our main content to the top. So now if we go to the browser and reload the page, so and scroll down, uh, you may see uh, at the network tab, if I scroll down, uh, on scroll, I receive our required JavaScript to execute this code. So I may divide my page into independent islands and render and uh, hydrate only what I see. So let's move on to the next uh, rendering strategy. And next rendering strategy is a streaming SSR. Streaming SSR is a technique that allows web pages to be rendered and delivered to the user in a streaming fashion, instead of waiting for entire page uh, to what before displaying it. So how streaming SSR works, instead of waiting for the entire HTML document to render on the server, streaming SSR divides the page into small chunks, as you may see, in the diagram and send in chunk to the client as soon as it becomes available. Uh, also, we render our uh, chunks uh, in, on the server uh, in parallel. So we do not wait for entire page and then break it somehow. We just render every 
chunk in parallel. This means that the user can start interacting with the page uh, and seeing content as soon as first chunk arrives without waiting for the entire page uh, to load. And this pattern, uh, you may use this fat pattern uh, thanks uh, uh, Next.js uh, 13 that uses React uh, 18 server components. Uh, but looks like that uh, main issue is hydration and JavaScript. And is it possible to uh, show our application without no JavaScript? And uh, there was introduced framework that called Quick. There was no days without introducing a new JavaScript framework, but this is not typical JavaScript framework it's something new and uh, this framework provides us with new approach that is called resumability resumability allows applications to continue execution where the server left uh, of all frameworks need to keep track of uh, internal data structures about the application state the current generation of frameworks does not preserve this information when transitioning from the server to browser uh, you may think about hydration as about push system and reasonability as about pull system. So with uh, uh, hydration, we actually actually download uh, and execute code to actually register uh, the event handlers just in case uh, of user interaction. Like uh, when we, in previous example, we scrolled a page and we what our bundle uh, just in case but maybe i uh, do not like to press this page but with reliability you may think about it as about pull system uh, we do nothing we just wait for the user interaction to trigger an event then wisely cre uh, create the handler to process the event and as you may see uh, in the diagram uh, with hydration, we get HTML, download all page JavaScript, try to parse uh, our JavaScript, execute execute our JavaScript, bind the listeners. By the way, uh, but with renewability, we just uh, pull HTML and we are ready. Since uh, quick, just serialize all our uh, JavaScript into HTML. Uh, hydration uh, is uh, recovering event handlers by downloading and re-executing uh, all components in SSR SSG rendered HTML. The site is sent to the client twice. Uh, once we send HTML, then we send a JavaScript. Uh, all this work just to retrieve something that server uh, had uh, but lost. Like we try to compare uh, HTML that we sent with uh, rendered JavaScript, and then we make our page interactive. So it's a bit overhead. With reasonability, we serialize everything, and uh, that's why we call it reasonability. And I prepared small demo. For it, let me share my, uh, oh, it's Astro. Uh, it's, uh, I need to open another window. <laughs> okay. Yep, right. Uh, so, you uh, may see that syntax is pretty similar to uh, React, but it's uh, a bit another sense for children. We use slot tags uh, instead of uh, use state, we use use signal uh, hooks. Uh, but uh, main thing, it's uh, this uh, component dollar sign uh, component. Uh, so with this uh, components and on click handlers also with dollar sign we attach our handlers and what all necessary javascript uh, when we trigger some actions so let's take a look uh, at the browser uh, i prepared same application and uh, let's reload the application and as you may see, we haven't shipped any any additional uh, JavaScript. We only have testing library, but I suppose that this is uh, added by my browser. Uh, and uh, if I press the button, 
I load all necessary JavaScript. So with this approach, we load JavaScript when user triggers some actions. So uh, we discussed 10, nine different rendering strategies, and hopefully it's, it will be helpful for you. Uh, let's move to our uh, next topic, uh, to micro frontends. But before talking about micro frontends, uh, we need to talk a bit about microservices. Since backend developers started observing same, uh, started observing uh, these problems uh, earlier than frontend developers, <laughs> and. Uh, 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 microservice architecture style uh, focuses on solving and scaling problem uh, of big monolithic applications, especially in clouds, the front-end developers started to observe similar problems. Uh, people started to create uh, SPAs at the beginning of uh, uh, 200, uh, <laughs> 2010, and in the middle of previous decades, there were many huge monolithic SPAs uh, where our change was extra complicated and architecture uh, reliable, reliable performance uh, was also a big problem. And as you may see uh, in the diagram that we have uh, growth uh, of popularity microservices since uh, two, 2015. <clears throat> so let's move to the microservices, micro frontends. The term micro frontend uh, first came up in a uh, technology radar at the end of uh, 2016. Micro frontend uh, is an architectural approach in which independent applications are assembled into one large application. It makes it possible to combine uh, in one application different widgets or pages written by different teams using different frameworks. Uh, the micro frontend is an architecture style where independently delivered frontend applications are compared into greater application. We will see it uh, next. And as you may see uh, in the diagram, uh, that uh, micro frontends uh, are extremely popular right now and their popularity only grows. So uh, let's talk a bit about advantages of micro frontends. Uh, so first advantage of micro frontends is, and main, it's uh, modularity. Uh, since our application is uh, combined by different uh, models, uh, as you may see uh, in the picture, that it's uh, example of uh, micro frontend application and our application is combined by three different uh, applications. Uh, and these applications could be even written on different technologies, but uh, it's not a good idea, honestly. Um, so another, uh, as another pros of micro frontend uh, architecture is that it's easier to test since we have a uh, modular structure and uh, it's easier to test uh, something uh, that uh, that uh, was break down. Uh, also applications can be deployed independently. Uh, there is no need to uh, deploy entire page. We may deploy only orders uh, part of the page if we have some changes. Also it's possible uh, we have possibility of horizontal team scaling since every team can work on different application and applications can be implemented in different technologies. The key point here is that over the time, Web UI teams should have scalable and framework agnostic applications. And uh, this is good. Uh, this is good part uh, that we can use different technologies. But uh, if you start your project, it's better to start from one framework. Uh, and all micro frontends uh, applications have three main parts. It's uh, our micro frontends uh, as products, orders, recommendations. Uh, also, we need to have micro frontends uh, framework as single SPA, uh, Astro, or something else. 
and also we need to have uh, the host page, just a page with HTML where we can put our uh, micro front ends. <clears throat> but uh, except of advantages, micro front ends has uh, have also potential problems. So let's talk about them as well. <clears throat> so. Uh, micro frontends uh, have uh, potential problems uh, such as overloading, uh, especially if we are going to use at least two JavaScript frameworks. Uh, so uh, it's better to keep one JavaScript framework in order to uh, have uh, developers that understand one framework and uh, uh, have a faster what but uh, sometimes uh, it's useful when you have a migration task. For instance, you used uh, AngularJS, but you'd like to migrate to Angular 2 and higher. So in this case, you uh, might have uh, two or more frameworks, and it's a good way to uh, migrate your application using micro frontends. Uh, another potential problem is overall complexity, uh, ju just uh, Micro frontend applications are usually uh, more complex than uh, monolith one, since uh, you have different parts, you have different teams, uh, you have different, you have more configuration, uh, and it makes sense to use micro frontends if uh, you are going to build big applications. If you are going to build small applications, there is no need to use micro frontends. Uh, also, micro frontends uh, have potential problem with consistent to look and feel since uh, you need to share your CSS, your styles between different micro frontends, different teams works uh, work on this uh, uh, parts. So it's uh, more complicated to uh, achieve it. And uh, last uh, potential problem is communication between micro frontends. Probably if your micro frontends uh, communicate uh, a lot, you need to think about uh, combining them into one micro frontend uh, because micro frontends shouldn't communicate too much. But still, uh, frameworks such uh, as uh, single as uh, Astro SPA uh, provides uh, single SPA provides uh, API to communicate with micro frontends. Uh, so how can we build micro frontends? I gathered most popular approaches uh, that we have. Uh, so first frame, so first approach is using iframes. E it's not popular. It's ugly solution with a lot of problems uh, with isolated CSS, navigation issues, and a lot of SEO issues. But uh, we used it. But uh, let's uh, uh, forget about this approach and uh, use something newer. Uh, another approach, uh, also native browser approach, is using web components. Web components is low-level browser API that helps to build component-based micro frontends. Uh, then uh, you may use some frameworks, and one of the most popular frameworks is single SPA. Uh, it's like a shell for hosting different SPAs, with uh, independent deployment and runtime loading. And this framework has uh, uh, 12,000 stars uh, on the GitHub. Uh, also, you may use uh, Bit. Bit, it's uh, more about components. It's tool for managing independent components from which you can compose your micro frontends. And Bit uh, has uh, 16 thousand stars on the github and uh, most popular framework i would say maybe not uh, but it has uh, biggest but, but it has the, but it has uh, 27 thousand stars on the github is astro astro uh, islands represents a leading paradigm shifting for front end web architecture astro extracts your web ui into smaller isolated components on the page um and we are close uh, to our last topic uh, uh, about mobile uh, optimization and PWA. 
and uh, last year's uh, conversion rate uh, out of the total number uh, a conversion rate of mobile applications compared to desktop was growing it means that more and more users prefer to access web applications via smartphones that's why we suggest paying attention to such patterns as mobile first and pwa and as you may see in the diagram that in uh, 2022 uh, almost 60 percent of users uh, uh, of all internet traffic uses uh, mobile devices so uh, it's very important to optimize your application uh, or website for uh, mobile users um, so for this purpose you may use pwa pwa is progressive web application uh, its applications uh, uh, that use emerging web browser APIs and features along with traditional progressive enhancement strategy uh, to bring a native app-like uh, user experience to cross-platform web applications. This means that you can, uh, for example, open your PWA website in browser on your phone and add it uh, as an application to your home screen, uh, which will give you the possibility to use your web application as uh, native. And as you may see at the meme, that it's combination of website and mobile application. Uh, you may use native uh, API as uh, a service worker manifest files uh, to create a PWA, or you may use frameworks such as Workbox that uses same technologies, but uh, this, frameworks had, this framework has a lot of recipes to help you build your PWA faster. And uh, PWA has uh, such process, pros as uh, better search engine. Uh, optimization because search engines rank higher web applications which are optimized for mobile devices. Uh, these applications uh, have better UX because it's becoming easier for users to access the content and uh, you have one code base for Android and iOS. There is no need to build two applications. Uh, and uh, let's take a look uh, to technical components of a PWA. And uh, in order to build PWA, we need uh, only three components. Uh, so first component is a service worker. It's just component of JavaScript code, which works as a proxy between browser and network. A service worker manages the push notifications and help uh, to build the offline first application using the browser cache API. Uh, secondly, we need uh, the manifest file. It's a config, uh, JSON config file, which contains the information of your application, like icons to be displayed and cached on your home screen uh, when installed, the short name of application, background covers, themes, uh, or images that you need to cache. If the manifest file is present, uh, the Chrome browser will automatically trigger the web app install banner. And if the user agrees, this adds the icon to the home screen and uh, the PWA is installed. And uh, third uh, component of uh, PWA is HTTPS uh, connection. The service worker have the ability to intercept the network requests and can modify the responses. Service workers perform uh, all the actions uh, on the client side, hence, PWA requires secure protocol HTTPS. The service worker has the ability to receive push notifications and background sync, which, which definitely increases the user experience and uh, keeps the customer uh, engaged. Push notifications and background sync are optional, but are recommended to provide a more native-like experience. Uh, so I hope that uh, this presentation uh, uh was helpful to uh in order to select appropriate technologies for your project and if you have some questions uh uh i'm happy to answer them i see that we have something in the chat 
by mobile you mean small screen devices actually uh i am uh am i correct uh so um no since uh pwa is more about uh mobile devices uh that we, uh, that we can uh access to a native API of font, such a camera, such a storage, such push notifications. It's more about PWA. Also, mobile have uh, vast or more differ diversity in features availability. Yes, uh, that's uh, what uh, uh, I said, that we may access numerous of uh, native API features. Can you share good ideas for sharing a common code in micro frontends like widgets, tiles, ATC, considering usage of uh, one framework? Um, so, honestly, uh, I uh, can't advise uh, using one of the frameworks for micro frontends, uh, one of these micro fra uh, frameworks, I would recommend using maybe single SPA. Uh, maybe it's not so popular as other frameworks, but uh, this framework is battle tested uh, and uh, and this framework uh, has big community and a lot of uh, battle tested questions. My question was triggered by that you shared before the PWA topic. Um, so he, question about mobile uh, devices, I guess. Sorry, could you uh, say your question? Because I'm a bit con confused. Uh, yeah, I asked because, um, about what do you mean by mobile devices? Because you shared the statistic uh, how many people visited the internet resources from mobile devices. Uh, and it, uh, the question was not related to PVA applications because, yeah, it's obviously that PVA means more features and so on. Um, yep. Yeah, so uh, from reading the article where I uh, borrowed this diagram, um, uh, it means that uh, this uh, diagram shows mobile uh, phone uh, usage. It it's not about small screens, it's about mobile phones. Okay, thank you. You already answered me. I just... <laughs> okay, uh, maybe someone has questions. 